Hey everyone, welcome back to our latest edition of Novelist Unwind. I'm so excited to be here today with uh, Joanna Davidson Politano. Did I say that right? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> She's a debut author. Her first novel comes out October 30, uh, October 3rd. I'm sorry, comes out October 3rd. Uh, Lady Jane Disappears. And I'm really excited to talk to her about it. It's kind of a very interesting storyline. But before we get into talking about the book and, and the characters and the, you know, what's going to happen in that story, um, Joanna, tell us a little bit about you, where you're from, how you got started writing, all that fun stuff. Well, sure. Um, I'm from kind of the Chicago suburbs area. And I have a husband and a three-year-old and a one-year-old. <laughs> and so I'm kind of a naptime novelist. I only open my computer when my kids are sleeping. <laughs> and uh, fortunately, they both take an afternoon nap. So I have that time and then a little bit evenings occasionally if my husband's gone. Mm -hmm. um, and I worked in publishing in the nonfiction side for several years. Uh, I was a pharmaceutical writer for a while. Oh, wow. And, yeah. So that's kind of my background. Oh, so why then fiction over nonfiction? What what made you want to go that direction? Well, actually, my grandma started telling me about her parents' love story, and it was so fascinating to me, um, just the, the things that they overcame, that the story just poured out of me. I couldn't not write it. It was such a cool story, and I had no intention of publishing it, and I, I haven't, but it really got me hooked on fiction, and it was just, it was a totally different animal than uh, Christian living and articles and things that I was working on, and it, it just, it, it really um, caught my attention a lot. It was very fun. Well, that's intriguing. So you're talking about your great-grandparents. So what, what years are we talking about here? Uh, very early in 1900s, like I think 1905, wow. um, my great-grandfather came to the States from Norway. Oh and uh, yeah, he had a whole uh, family drama background that was fascinating where he got kicked out of his house and he played the piano in the silent movie theaters. <laughs> and uh, he met my great grandmother who was also a Norwegian immigrant. And they just had the sweetest love story. And they're like my role models, even though I've never met them. Oh, so that, yeah. that just got me started writing stories. And it's just been something that I've enjoyed ever since. So do you think you'll ever publish that, or is it more just a family story? I'm not sure anybody would be interested in it besides me. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was something that was, um, when I finished writing it, I had it, like I printed it on my printer and gave it to my grandma, and oh. it was probably one of my favorite moments in my writing life. Oh, that's so but sweet. Oh. If it stops there, I'm happy. I don't, I've never really attempted to publish it. So. Oh, I bet she treasures that, though. What a, I mean, that, that's like a family yeah. heirloom. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. that's, that's so cool. Okay, well, then tell us about Lady Jane Disappears. Um, a, a couple different things I wanted to talk about with that. Um, you said in, in some of the information online that you visited a lot of old houses in Great Britain and climbed around in them. So tell us a little bit about your research experience for the story. Sure. Well, actually, my husband and I went to Scotland on our honeymoon uh -huh. um, about five, a little more than five years ago. And we basically just toured all of the UK with houses that were abandoned and old derelict castles and uh, family estates and things like that. And the, just the stories were so fascinating to me that I wanted to write, um, I, I just wanted to write something that was based on a big old house like that. That's such an adventure. And I guess I should have had you talk about what the story's about before we jump to the houses, but I, mean, I love old houses too. So it's like, oh, I want to talk about the old houses. So yeah, so that's kind of been, let's tell everybody what the story's about. Um, you know, don't give away any spoilers, but tell us about your heroine and what she's got herself into. Sure, well, uh, the heroine is actually not Lady Jane, it's a girl named Orly, and she's grown up in debtor's prison with her father, who's a debtor, and he is a, a novelist, a serial novelist, uh, kind of like what Charles Dickens did, and so when he dies, she takes over his pen name, because uh, nobody knows who this guy is, right. and she goes to live with uh, some wealthy relatives, and she starts kind of writing them into her stories. She's so quiet, so she doesn't necessarily have the courage to stand up to them, but she definitely kind of exacts her revenge 
uh, by writing them into their stories, but then they start recognizing themselves. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. And, kind of a and, and, pop culture novel. <laughs> yeah, just so people understand, you know, a serial novel would be like Dickens. He mm -hmm. had those stories printed in the newspaper. So like a chapter or two at a time would be in the newspaper and people had to wait till the what till the following week or following months sometimes to get the next installment. And so this is what Orly's doing. She's just writing these kind of as she goes along, right? Yeah, it was similar to like the TV shows that we all watch where we tune in for new episodes and things like that. And it's a continuing saga. Um, that's kind of what they did back then. That was, they had uh, like magazines and quarterlies and things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and that's how Dickens got to be so popular was from, from doing those, uh, those serials, yes. those stories. And I love that too, because I'm, I'm a Charles Dickens fan. And I loved how you said, you know, you kind of took that idea and you took the idea of a pin name and um, you're fascinated by the Bronte sisters. And so tell us about, tell us about that. Do you read, do you read all this classic literature and how did that, if so, did that inform your story in any way? Yes, I, um, I grew up in kind of a farm community where in the summers you detasseled and then you were kind of on your own. So I read a lot of books <laughs> and I love the Bronte sisters and I love Charles Dickens. Um, and even some of the Russian authors and things like that, I just soaked it all up. Yeah. And I loved the rich characters in Charles Dickens. Which is your favorite novel, Dickens' novel? Probably Our Mutual Friend. Oh, really? I love that one. The twists are amazing. They are. I've read that, and actually I had a hard time keeping, uh, and I like Dickens, like, you know, so it's, but it's like I was having a little bit of trouble, you know, okay, what's going on here? So I think uh -huh. my favorite is Bleak House, but, but I love one of the adaptations of it too. So it's like I saw it and had to read the, read the book. And it was really, it was really fun. It was fun. Bleak House is wonderful too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like it. Okay, so you have this idea for the story. You go and you explore all these, <laughs> these wonderful old houses in Great Britain. Did any fun stories to tell? Anything that happened while you were doing that? during your research or were you weren't actually re were you actually researching then or was that just kind of fun and then you went back to it well my husband's a really good sport so we basically spent our honeymoon researching okay <laughs> so we just went for several weeks and you know he's he's not a book person but he really helped me um get stories and kind of track down the details and things like that and all the research that I needed Oh, um, we went to some libraries and <laughs> oh wow that's so neat that you got to spend that much time you know we, we you know we did a lot of sightseeing things too but right. <laughs> most of it was touring uh, abandoned mansions and castles and cathedrals and getting some of the stories behind them oh wow that is just so cool that's so cool so we don't have a copy of uh, lady jane disappears to show anyone the cover the book doesn't come out till october 3rd but um, it's, it's a lovely cover, and can you tell us a little bit about it and how it really reflects the story? Sure. It has a very subdued colors, a little bit of a kind of a mystery, like shadowy look to it, because mm -hmm. um, there are definitely mystery elements to the book. Um, the woman on the cover is, I think they were going for Lady Jane, who is actually the heroine's mother and the subject of the novel that she's writing. Um, and she's trying to figure out what happened to her mother who she's never met. And so Lady Jane has like a little purple earring on the book cover and that's kind of like her signature thing through the book. Um, and of course it has a very Victorian look to it, very scrolly and things like that. So I think Ravel did a beautiful job. They really they captured the tone of the book very well. By the time that um, we put this on, uh, by the time we post this interview, that we'll have, you know, I've got copies. Uh, gosh, I can't even talk. We have an image of the book, so we'll go on the website. So that'll be cool. So everybody can can see it as they, you know, when they watch the interview. Um, beyond writing um, fiction, writing this wonderful historical story, though, I also checked out your blog. And your oh, wonderful. yeah, and your main focus there are true stories. So can you talk to us a little bit about the true stories that are on your blog? 
Sure. Well, I actually started blogging before I started fiction writing. I was just fascinated by, uh, I guess, the people that the rest of the world sort of overlooks mm -hmm. and just the stories that are kind of buried in some really quiet people. Um, I especially like talking to people in nursing homes, um, people that are just sort of forgotten, but have these amazing uh, insights and lives and things like that. So kind of like the, uh, the abandoned houses that are kind of overlooked and things like that. Um, I'm just fascinated by like real life stories and a lot of my character inspirations and some of the, the tensions and the dramas have come from talking to people. Uh, not that they'd be able to recognize themselves in stories, but just some of the tensions that have, you know, driven them through uh, adversity in their life and things like that. Well, that's such a blessing that you're willing to, you know, to do that. And it, it, it's been a blessing to me, honestly. I, I'm sure it has been. Yeah, yeah. I mean, cause sometimes we don't do well about remembering people and taking care of them. And in one quote that you had, I took this off your site, um, if the world fits, you're the wrong size. <laughs> I love that. But, you know, talk to us a little bit about that, how that defines you, how that defines Orly in, in, in the novel. Um, well, yeah. when, when I was younger, I kind of felt out of place because everybody in my family is extremely outgoing <laughs> and just sort of a different personality. And I'm just kind of quiet. And I, I like to listen more than I like to talk. And so everybody in my family always coached me, well, you can get over that. You can, you can overcome being quiet and you could be really outgoing. And God really worked on me, especially, I guess, through high school and college years and just told me, you know what, that's okay because there's specific things that you can do. There are specific people you can listen to that you wouldn't be able to if you weren't that quiet. And I found a book when I was in college that had that exact phrase as their title. I think it was something like, if the world fits, then you're the wrong size. And that always stuck with me. And I guess kind of realigned my standards for myself to something a little bit more biblical. Yeah, I like that. I mean, it's so it's such a easy phrase to remember and to say and you know it's like a bumper sticker you know slogan <laughs> and yet there's so much depth and truth to it it's like you know I've been kind of thinking about that all afternoon it's like oh, there's some real truth there to that yeah it's actually kind of the theme of my novel as the main character is trying to fit into this household where she just doesn't belong she grew up very poor like the poorest of the poor in debtor's prison and the family that she lives with is wealthy but they're so broken and um, in a lot of ways naive and she just she doesn't understand why they don't reach out and help in like very basic ways and she just doesn't understand the way they live life and the hero keeps telling her you know what that's okay I love that about you if if you were like like them I wouldn't like you so much oh wow and that's that theme plays out and she finally figures out by the end that she was created the way she is for a reason. So that's kind of how that sentence fits into the book. I like that. That's really good. That's great. So what's next? Um, my next story comes out with Ravel in July of 2018. And okay. it takes place in a vineyard in, in the south of England. And has to do with uh, finding a buried fortune. And the love story has a little bit of traces of my own love story Aww. and uh, some of the tension that kept us apart for a long time mm -hmm. and then what brought us together and kind of the journey that I went through to be uh, even interested in my husband. Wow, wow. So that's that was a fun one to write. <laughs> well, that's fun. Well, and I read a little bit about it too and it's about an artist whose canvas is her room, right? Yes, um, she, nobody really takes her seriously as an artist, even though she's wealthy, everybody's kind of got their own agenda in her life, so they just don't think to give her canvases, so she just, she decorates her whole room, and it ends up looking like a garden from ceiling to floor. Well, I just love the imagination and the originality that, that you're bringing to these stories, and, and can't wait to read um, Thank you. Lady Jane Disappears when, when it comes out, I'll be looking for it. So, uh, a couple more things real quick. I do want to mention that Joanna won the American Christian Fiction Genesis Contest in 2016. I'm assuming in the historical category, correct? 
Yes. And, yes. So, and it was for Lady Jane Disappears? Um, I don't remember, honestly. I, there were two different um, manuscripts that I was entering around that time, so I don't remember. <laughs> Whichever. <laughs> she, is, she is a Genesis winner, which is, you know, that's a really big deal um, in, in the Christian writing world. So congratulations on that. Thank you. And then I also want to ask, I ask, try to ask everybody, after you're done writing, you put all those hours into writing your book, what do you do to unwind? I play with my kids a oh. lot. <laughs> <laughs> that little they're, one-year-old and three-year-old. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're so much fun. Um, I, I'm a stay-at-home mom, so the whole time they're awake, I get to be a kid. <laughs> so we have all sorts of adventures. Oh. We live in the middle of the woods, so we take walks through the woods all the time and play in the creek. And, oh, how um, nice. It's, yeah, that's like my favorite part of my day. That's oh. wonderful for me. That's so sweet. I love that. And how can people get in touch with you? Um, I have an author page on Facebook. Okay. And it's just my name, Joanna Davidson Politano. And then my website is www.jdpstories.com. Okay. And uh, I think there's a contact thing on there and uh, my blog. Okay. And do you have a newsletter? Can people sign up for your newsletter on your blog? There is a spot where you could sign up for a newsletter that has not yet gone out. <laughs> well, that's okay. Still sign up but, so that when Joanna's ready, you'll be sure and get information on her on her writing journey and, and what she's up to. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a link to sign up for the newsletter on my website. Great. Great. Well, thank you so much. Again, I'm just really excited. I'm, I mean, I love, like I said, I love Dickens. Love that era. I think it's so fascinating. You've pulled so many different things together to create this story and it just sounds it just sounds fascinating so wish you the best of luck um thank you i appreciate it yeah it's great debut novelist joanna davison politano welcome we're so glad you were here with us today and um to everybody watching thank you for being here too we really appreciate it and we'll see you next week bye bye